in Las Vegas at the annual NAB show, and we are powered by LiveView. I'm so excited actually to just jump right in because really it's all about the content, right? Let's face it, people are hungry for content. And I am thrilled. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm joined with Ben Ratner, and he is a live streaming technical producer at Roker Media. Okay, and then next we have next uh, the awesome, very energetic VP of Live View Marketing and uh, Claudia Barber Barbiero. Barbara, Barbara, I had it. I was okay. nailing it before the live. You were. I you was. Were. To be fair, you were. Okay, okay. so. Um, Claudia, Claudia and Ben work hand in hand to deliver live streaming content. And let's just, let's go for it. Um, high level, tell me Ben, what is Roker Media? Cool, so Roker Media is a subsidiary of Al Roker Entertainment, which traditionally does linear TV. They've been doing it for decades now. Um, but uh, Al is really interested in kind of what's next. Uh, this is TV's Al Roker Weatherman Today show. Um, and he likes to figure out what the next thing in media is. And he's latched onto live streaming. He latched onto this about a year ago before anyone was even taking it super seriously. Um, so basically, he created a production company that does live streaming productions for social media. So that's Facebook, that's Twitter, Periscope, you now, YouTube. Wherever there's a platform and an audience, we look to create content. Wow. And I just, we, we don't want to get too technical here um, because it's fun to talk. We want to talk about engagement. We want to talk about viewership and that's where you come in. But it would be remiss of me and I know we can't really see it or can we go to a wide shot here. Um, we're talking about mobile friendly live streaming capabilities from Live View, okay? Right. And it's happening literally guys in a backpack. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Claudia, why don't you talk to us a little bit about this fun yeah. system you have? You know, and actually it's probably pretty pertinent because it's how we're streaming this show right now. Um, we're streaming with these remote units. I've been on Be Terrific before and we've taken the audience through it, but it's, it's always good to remind folks that every time we're cutting to different parts of the convention center, it's because the key, these camera guys are able to walk around and roam around the halls not tethered by a cable. And the only way is because this unit is allowing them to stream back here to the studio and be able to go live. Um, one of the cool things is, is that we can power that. You can go live from anywhere. But these days, just like what's going on with Roker Media, is that it's all going to a new platform. Previously, everyone could whip out their cell phone, but you're limited with that. You're limited with the bandwidth. So if there's cellular congestion or there's a drop in the Wi-Fi, that stream goes In fact, out. You know, that was one of our biggest problems when the production company first started before I was even there. They were the first to do uh, live streaming shows to Meerkat, uh, mm -hmm. which made Meerkat rest in peace. Um, a moment. But you know, we were limited to a single camera. They were trying to do as much production as they could but you know, you were limited to your cell phone's optics, your cell phone service, exactly. your cell phone's microphone. Some of that they were able to work with, but it took until about a year ago for Facebook to open up to... Uh, they open up their API. They open up their API yes. yep. uh, so we can use professional streaming equipment. Exactly. And then uh, the rest of them have followed. YouTube was doing it a little while earlier. You now was also. But when Facebook opened up to the general public uh, with their API, that was when live streaming really took yeah. off. And I think it's, you hit the nail on the head. It is about... Poor nail. They, yes, but they, they recognized pretty quickly that any brand, anyone that needed to represent their content well, needed to have good quality content on that live stream. The only way to do that was to open up the API. We're partners with Facebook and early on developed with them to create an easy way to integrate these types of more broadcast level equipment into the same sort of user interface that people were used to with, an, with their iPhone and the app. Um, but what these bigger units are, we've actually taken and put into smaller sizes to really help. And foam sizes. All right, those are fake. I uh, think that's what you call a game changer. Yeah, those are fake. Um, but uh, in order to enable people to really run and gun, 
but by being able to take HDMI in or SDI in, now all of a sudden you have what we call good glass. You've got a decent camera, you've got better microphone, better lighting, and anyone who thinks their brand shouldn't be represented just as well in their social media stream as any other media outlet is crazy today. So for me, um, I do a lot of multi-camera production. We don't do very much single camera production because uh, we want to bring in you know, multiple cameras, multiple elements. We want to really keep you tied into the action. So we hook up to other production systems like TriCaster, like Blackmagic, uh, whatever we have available to us, um, and that's how we can get you know multiple cameras, graphics, roll-ins, all this you know traditional television elements into a modern day platform. All with this. I mean, we don't have to have a microwave truck anymore. We, I mean, exactly. it's that or, mobile friendly. Or a very expensive internet drop. Um, so there's, it provides the ability for more Agile's production studios to be broadcasting from anywhere, in addition to being able to take that camera then and go out into the field. And I think that's really important now for the new audiences that are watching television in different places. It's super important on the social media side because people expect that same quality that they're used to getting on television. Um, but now it's just amped up, you know, for yeah, a you variety know, you, of you, reasons. You saw this with podcasts early on when podcasts uh, kind of started to take off. There were some that had really great audio quality, people who had, you know, real radio backgrounds. And then there were some that were just, you know, not great audio quality, not great production, uh, no sound effects, no nothing. And all of the popular podcasts are the one that had really good quality. And that's something we saw specifically with the transition to live video. You know, live video was cool when Facebook and some of these opened up to just doing it from your phone. But when you started to be able to use the API, use RTMP, and get in directly into the system with really good quality audio and video, that's when people really started to think, ah, this thing has a future. Yeah, so, and, but it's not just that. But think about it this way. It has a future. It can compete. But there's a whole other element now in that it's not passive. It's not someone sitting at home on their couch making an appointment and watching it. It's people while they're mobile, watching it on their phone, and now being able to interact live with what's happening. I love it. I love all of this. This is so much fun as content creators everywhere. I mean, everyone should, like, this booth is buzzing because of the urgency to get on board. And I think Roker Media is doing a fabulous job. And let's talk a little bit more about the Never Settle show and how, what's it about, why people should watch it, and how the interactive uh, element really works for the show. Sure, so the Never Settle show is hosted by Mario Armstrong. Ah, can't even say words. Mario Armstrong. We're live. Live element. Uh, <laughs> and there's a reason I'm not in front of the camera normally. Um, <laughs> so uh, he's the digital lifestyle uh, a uh, guy over at the Today Show, uh, where he does know Al Roker from there. Um, and he's been working to create a talk show for years about never settling, being the best you can be, um, you know, achieving all your goals. Um, he was ship shopping it around to a bunch of networks, uh, cable channels. He wasn't really able to get a platform for it there. But basically, within the last year, live stream became a very viable place to do this. So what we did is we, uh, we seeked out an existing uh, audience because it's hard to build an audience from scratch, but uh, we teamed up with Entrepreneur Magazine, which has millions of followers on Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, YouTube. So immediately we had an audience that we couldn't have days, months, weeks, years earlier. So that helped to get the audience uh, to fuel the interaction. Um, and then, in a, uh, so yeah, it's a very interactive talk show. From the moment he decided to start producing this show the way we did uh, when he hooked up with Roker Media, he wanted it to be fan sourced. He live streamed production meetings. He asked people for feedback. He did some test shows. He did all of these things to get the audience's direct feedback. And every segment on the show, every guest on the show, somehow was uh, encouraged by the audience themselves. So it, that's just totally unique. I yeah. mean, if you think about it, um, it, it truly is the future of interactive programming. Yeah, you and know. you know, for, for years... What does interactive... I know it sounds simple, but like, what is interactive? Like someone typing a comment? Is it someone like... Okay. Uh, like? So I would say there's two kinds of interactivity. There's passive interactivity where the audience could be interacting with, you know, sending tweets at the show, but them not acknowledging them, not even favoriting them on Twitter, not replying, maybe putting them on screen if you're lucky. The kind of interaction we do is highly, highly interactive where... We have a social team of four or five people during this hour-long show choosing good comments, finding trends, 
um, putting comments on screen. And actually, Mario responds to these comments live on the air. Sometimes a segment will change during a segment because the fans said, eh, I don't want that, or oh, I really want that. Um, so it's really taking what the audience wants and turning it into the show that they want to see. Uh, honestly, that's why we were behind it 1,000%. That's a lot of percent. It, yeah. It's, yes. Um, no, I mean, this is, the, this is the, the future, and we totally want to embrace it. It is positive, but it's also just, just a great direction for what's happening in our industry. So being able to take what would be traditional broadcast technology and being able to use that to empower this type of new future of programming was right up our alley and something we absolutely wanted to get involved with and help support. Um, and, it, and it comes in a backpack. Like, that's yeah. what's blowing my mind. Yeah. It is. It, yeah. it really is that well, neat. You know, Ben can talk a little bit about where they produce the show yeah. and how yeah, that is so produced. One of the ways, yeah. uh, uh, early, early on in the production, Mario said, where do you want the show to happen? Do you want it to happen in a traditional TV studio or somewhere else? He was not asking me this question. <laughs> he was asking the audience this question. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have... Does he look into the camera? I'm sorry, I, I, I can't wait to watch this show, but almost like I'm, it, uh, I might sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but... Does he look into the camera? Is he that engaged? Is so he what we pointing out is, people by their handles? That's like, exactly what happens. So we, we do have a social media team. We have uh, Shy and Evie who run uh, are kind of the faces of social media. But Mario himself, on his, we have a steady cam, which is his main camera for the show, where he's going all over the studio. Again, makes life super easy for us. Um, but on we'll his, get to the challenges but, later. But on his steady cam, uh, we have a program monitor for him and a teleprompter that we can put comments into. So as we put things on the screen, he can react to them in real time. Uh, he, he did a, a poll uh, on last week's show where he literally said, he's a big sneakerhead, loves shoes. What kind of shoes should I wear? And we do a little three-minute pre-show while we're waiting for people to get in. Uh, they chose the show live on the air, and then they were making comments on his shoes. And he was reacting to them in real time, literally looking right into the camera and directly engaging with fans. It, it, it's a kind of interaction you simply don't see on TV. You might see one or two comments occasionally. Yeah. You might see you know, it pop up on screen, but he really, really is the master of interaction. And that's the beauty of live. That can only happen in a live environment. It's fun to watch after the fact, but that, that excitement and that being part of the action while it's happening is, uh, is priceless. Yeah, but let me get back to how we chose oh, the studio. Yeah, yeah. As the fans said, uh, when he asked the fans, they said, we want it in a non-traditional broadcasting location. So we had to schlep in an entire production studio. Um, so it's basically like, pick the craziest location, and we're going to try and do our best to stream from there. Which planet would you like to do yeah. the Never Settle show on? Luckily, they chose Earth. Um, yeah. yeah, so we had to bring in a full studio crew, full studio equipment. Um, and you know, one of my biggest concerns, and the reason I'm happy that we were able to work with LiveView, is you know, we're on you know, the far end of New York City. Who knows what service is like? Who knows what Ethernet is like? We're working at a private company called Canary. They do security cameras. Really great company. Thrilled they're giving us the location. But I have so much going on from a technical perspective. There's so many things that can go wrong. If I have the reliability of my stream just working, that makes me really happy. I mean, I'll even tell you, even here at this trade show, you think it's a constant. What's working one day, you walk in the next day, and it's not. And so... I'm happy we're using our own equipment because of that reliability. The yeah, same yeah. thing. Having six cell phone signals, six or eight, and having two Ethernets with everything else going on, especially, you know, we're a big production crew, but we're not nearly as big as you would see on a normal television show. So, you know, as one of the, honestly, one of the few technical people in the room, not having to deal with Internet and having these, the plastic versions and not the phone <laughs> versions of these, um, it's, it's, you know, really takes a lot off of my plate when we're doing the production. So, what is sort of like an average conversation between the two of you? Like, uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> like, in can terms I get of, more stuff? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. But is it is it just sort of like you know you have an idea or you have an idea? How can we yeah. execute or what? So what how, is how that? Do you, how do you both. join us? Yeah, so it's it's both. A lot of times we can come in through the production crew and the technical side. We could be lucky and have someone like Ben who's very experienced with our technology and knows what our capabilities are and says, yes, I want it and I need it. Um, in this case with Mario, you know, he is an influencer and a lot of our technology is skewing now towards live online streaming. So we actually go out and talk to influencers and people who are out there to get their feedback. What do you want to see in a solution? What would empower you and help you to do more? Meaning what can we take off your brain so that you can focus more on content? 
And, you know, in working with Mario and some of the events that he would do, going out to some of the killer uh, uh, industry events and CES and all that stuff, we really, when he was putting the show together, we really started brainstorming because he was familiar, but he's in front of the camera. So he doesn't really know what the capabilities are. And so here's the, the beauty part about blending technical and creative in that when you can say to him, hey, you know when you're in your makeup chair and you're doing your periscope before you go on, wouldn't you want that to be a little bit better quality? Here now, now you can. Oh, and by the way, now you can go run up and down the street 10 times. So it's... And, and he does. And he does, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, because he is a character. I mean, he is a, a phenomenal, just great idea person, great creative energy. So it's a little bit of back and forth. I can explain, this is what some of our other customers are doing to create that more dynamic, engaging content. Because you do produce content differently for online versus television. Well, that's Let's something, talk about yeah, that. very yeah. specifically, yeah. I mean, first of all, costs, I mean, we the, the quality show we put on, you know, it's matching things that you would see on broadcast television just at a fraction of the price. Um, we're, we're using a service called Vidpresso for our graphics and comments. These are things that would normally require full systems, and it's running off of my laptop and Google Chrome. Um, you know, the cameras we're using. Trade secret alert, trade secret trade alert. Trade secret alert. Um, and another service we're using actually in conjunction with LiveView is uh, called Switchboard Live. Uh, and what we do with them is we, we send our LiveView signal through Switchboard, um, and I believe there's uh, some sort of partnership there. Yep. And we send to multiple platforms. Uh, so we're sending to Periscope, we're uh, sending to Facebook, and I'm actually sending it back up to YouTube as well, you know, just in case, just to have, you know, if I need to pull something down quickly, I have it available. Uh, and what this means so, is... But it's also going to Entre Entrepreneur Magazine. And it's going to Entrepreneur Magazine. You can go to multiple It's a, gr it's a great pages. point. Syndication and the ability to syndicate your content and reach multiple people in different places is another beautiful part about online streaming that you yeah. couldn't afford to do. And from a distribution standpoint. A big I'm issue with this um, in general is bandwidth constraints. Right. So, you know, if I were streaming from a TriCaster, while the TriCaster is capable of doing two simultaneous streams, uh, you know, that's taking, you know, a little bit of power out of the TriCaster every time. Uh, and I want to stream to way more than two places. Um, so using a service like Switchboard in conjunction with LiveView, I'm able to get it to everywhere I need to with the power of a single stream. I'm, you know, these things work through cell phone bonding and Ethernet. I'm not using any more than the single stream that I was initially sending out to send out to multiple platforms. Uh, so technology has finally, in the last two, three years, has really caught up with what it takes to do this kind of pro uh, project. Everything really finally came together. But affordably now, too. But affordably, yeah. That's I mean, why your booth yeah. is buzzing. It's yeah. truly like when you're walking around NAB here, like there's activity happening here. Well, Who's coming we're, here? We're, Other also, we're also in a variety of places because of that. So a lot of the traditional core broadcasters are coming here, learning about our latest and greatest technology, our so, yeah, when I when I was interning units, as, a, yeah. as a, a couple of years ago in college, uh, I worked at News 12 Long Island, and they were using things like this yeah. uh, at News 12. And I was like, oh, I thought you needed satellite. I thought you needed giant trucks. But no, you take a backpack, you go, you call it a day, you know, at a fraction of the price. Right. But um, we're also in the other hall. There's For people who have never been here, it's every single hall in the Las Vegas Convention Center. It's a huge show. It's like Disney for yeah. nerds. But uh, we have another, uh, another set up there where we're specifically talking about live streaming to social media. There's actually a dedicated Facebook Live pavilion here that's for Facebook Live partners. And we're there showing how with essentially a very decent camera, but an inexpensive camera, a decent mic, uh, an HDMI cable, and a solo unit, or a small one here, uh, you're able to go live. And we're actually broadcasting live from there with two cellular connections, and that's it. Um, so, But we can actually show people that, yes, you would think, I need a huge crew, or I need someone who has a broadcast engineering degree, or I need super expensive broadcast-level camera equipment. I can say no for essentially... $3,000 or so, you can have a kit and you could be going live and it's easy. And you can, like yeah. you're saying, rival what you see on television. Absolutely. Yeah. You know how like networking, like you have to buy airtime or space? It, that's, do you think that will ever happen in terms of like I can buy that backpack and start streaming high quality stuff tomorrow, but I don't have to buy any airtime. Per so, se. I mean, like, that's, what, that's that what's work? great about social. And I, I always go to Facebook first as an example, just because you have the world's population on Facebook. Exactly. So, you know, uh, you're going to see, you know, 
traditional, you start with traditional broadcast, you had your three, four channels. I didn't exist at that point in time. Um, I, I was alive for the early cable. Um, but you started to see niche content going out to specific people who had specific interests. That's exactly what you see with Facebook Live programming. So you have every one of these Facebook pages is a vertical, is a channel. So yep. do you like entrepreneurial ideas? Entrepreneur Magazine. Do you like sports? Follow the NFL. Do you like Oprah? But we're not Follow paying. Oprah. Are we paying for Roker Media yet or no? No, right now it's, it's all, going out free. We have wonderful. Fabulous. Yeah, you should check fabulous. it out. They've got some killer programs. Yeah, yep, on and their the Never Facebook Tell Show uh, specifically yeah. is sponsored by FedEx Office, who have been incredible, and they align with Mario and his show's you know ideals. Um, we are able to integrate them into the programming. Uh, Talk with, to me about that, like sort of the interactive advertising, perhaps sure. aspect of this concept and content creation. Yeah. Um, I love that we're working with FedEx Office, and they're giving us a lot of leeway kind of on how we do um, our reads and promotions on the show. Um, you know, one of the things that Mario talks about is getting your stuff in front of people. Is it a pamphlet? Is it a resume? Is, uh, when he was going through the process of pitching this show around, he created these top quality kind of pamphlets, research, all his stuff. And he's showing off how he did it using FedEx Office stuff during the show. And these are things that don't just translate to the show. This is, I have a new business idea. I have a new program I want to create. Uh, and he's able to really integrate that directly into the show, and it's just a natural integration with FedEx Office. I mean, go back to the early days of TV. You've got the, uh, you know, the cigarette guys sponsoring. Uh, yes. I don't remember all the names because I wasn't paying attention in mass media class. But it basically was if you had the money, it didn't matter what the audience wanted to hear. Uh, you are getting fed that message and that that this whole idea now with online and being able to instead of having be an advertiser these types of partnerships as opposed to sponsorships allow for an organic blend of the advertiser in with what would mean something to the home audience and, and you know, we don't need to we don't yeah. need to stop the show to do this exactly. either it's a kind of thing where it becomes an integrated segment you know FedEx happens to sponsor it but we're working to really make it work to be content that the audience is going to like, regardless of the fact that it's being sponsored. Uh, and that's going to probably be the biggest thing we see uh, in social video over the next mm -hmm. couple of years. People are starting to do it more and more. A lot of influencer-driven stuff, a lot of branded, branded driven content stuff. campaigns. But, but, yep. but also, the, the next generations, too, are super savvy. They don't want to be told what to buy or what to get. They don't want to be treated that way. We're not it's, stupid. No, it's about being authentic and having uh, brands that have an authentic blend or an organic blend with that entertainment outlet. I think that's the wave of the future. Yep, and something sure. we're really looking into and excited kind of for the development of is you know monetization right. within live streaming. You're kind of, uh, you know, before live streaming, before Facebook, you saw almost more of this because the, uh, you know, some of the other platforms that did streaming or video, they were able to integrate directly into their, you know, their video players, things like that, uh, you know, monetization, ways to make money, you know, direct purchase. Now you're a little bit at the mercy of the social platforms. So, you know, Facebook just started opening up to like donations. They have some ways to do products sometimes, but you can't click on the screen and buy anything. They have services like Busker that do offer that, but don't have the largest audience out there. Um, so the challenge is figuring out how can you make enough money off of this to make it viable. But we know we can. As a marketer, I'm excited about it because I know at some point it's going to be huge. Huge. Because of the targeting. Just like you were saying, it can be very specific audience, very specific interests, very specific demographics. And I can learn information about them so that I can make my content or my advertising better and more appealing and more effective. I, I might not have the most popular opinion on targeted advertising, but I love it as a consumer, yes. uh, not as a marketer, because I understand that these things are free. Facebook is free. Twitter is free. If they're going to be free and they have to be done by ads if they haven't figured out a better way, I at least want these ads to be something that I Relevant. care about. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to repeat which ads I see on my Facebook. I was going to say there's a lot of shoes I, online. I, I learn a, a lot, lot of shoes. I learn a lot about what marketers think I should be. Oh, really? Based <laughs> off of my, uh, my ads. Lesson marketers, be careful. <laughs> so, I mean, the passion is, is like beyond it, or shall I say, is terrific. Um, uh, because what, of the thing. Yeah. I get it. She Thank brought you. it. She brought it full circle. Yeah. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. Um, where? What's? What are you working on now to 
to push the envelope or challenge your viewers um, for the next quarter? Or where, what's going on in the, in the uh, pre-production room and all that stuff? Sure. So we, we've got a couple of productions right now that are really keeping us busy. And we kind of have a few different kinds of shows that we do to kind of be in different areas of production. And we have some things in pre-production. So in addition to Mario's show, uh, one of my favorite shows that we do is called Bull TV. Uh, it's hosted by Clay Aiken, America's uh, sweetheart or <laughs> second place sweetheart. Uh, uh, and Carrie Sheffield, who uh, used to be a cable news contributor. Um, and that's basically a morning show for millennials. And we're able to have conversations, long-form conversations, with the interactivity of the comments. And you have Clay Aiken reading your comments. That's awesome. We have all of the Claymates who love it. But also, you know, we get legitimate guests. We had uh, one of the vice presidential candidates, uh, from, I forget, uh, one of the independent parties. Uh, the one that didn't win. Well, one of yeah. the ones that didn't win. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we had a huge audience that day because yeah. with, with the power What is Huge. Huge. Uh, it question. depends on what you're looking for. Um, you know, there, there's, uh, I'm not going to give a specific number, but what we really go for is syndication through sharing. So, okay, d back, make that easy for me to understand sure. language okay. terms. So I'll, I'll use Never Settle Show as an example. Never Settle Show, we schedule a post two days in advance. So the show goes live in like 24 hours. I need to get back to New York very soon. Um, but already, Call the jet. But already on Entrepreneur's Facebook page, we have you know a link to the show that people can share. So we encourage them to share it out. We, we basically force our guests to share it out. Are you sh um, teaming up with brands to have giveaways and stuff? Are you in that space? Um, there, there are some giveaways on the show, and they also share the show. But the bottom line is the more people that share the show, the bigger your potential audience. So if you start with an audience of, let's say, one million people, you can expect you know, an, an okay-sized audience. But if you can take that potential audience and get bigger brands to share it, you're talking 10 million people, 20 million people. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg does uh, Facebook streams from time to time. Now, I think he knows the guy at the company uh, to be successful with those. But what I notice on those is I don't think they're gating, because you know, Facebook has you know, a gate on the amount of people that see your streams for a bunch of reasons, but largely they want you to ultimately pay for it. But when I look at Mark Zuckerberg's stream, he gets you know, 700, 800,000 shares, and that's where those views are coming from. When you have a friend telling you, this is something I like, you should watch it, it's basically the most basic level of influencer marketing is your friends. Exactly, exactly. Do you guys share the same, or I'm sure you do, the same analytic tool to measure that? Like, and then are you corresponding with that? Is that a big part of your uh, dynamic? So it's not part of our solution, but I as mean, a marketer. I mean, we think heavily, heavily about yeah. analytics. Luke Watson yeah. is my uh, partner in crime over at Roker Labs, uh, and they really specialize in analytics. Uh, so are you in on that combo? No, yeah, it's no? not part of it, but I'll, I'll say it's just if you, from my own experience, even from what we're doing here, we're syndicating to a couple different destinations, and we are going to be measuring uh, tremendously purely because we like to do this at different shows and events for different audiences. We want to make sure that we're actually... You want to see how much better my one is than everyone else's? I else think is. this one, because both of us are on it, is going to be through the roof. But uh, that's that's what I want to show to my boss anyway. Hard, 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 uh, hard, hard, yes, hard, yes, hard, yes. hard. But, but in all seriousness, again, as a marketer or as a content creator, you you thrive by that because it allows you to constantly improve, and that's what makes anything online much more agile than traditional linear television. And yeah, we're looking at graph you, during you're the show. Pivoting during the show. During the show, we yeah. see this, this, this going up, and then we see a little bit down. That's how we stop what like we're doing. Real we change time it, it is. or we modify it. Yeah, it's that real time, and some of that is from qualitative uh, feedback, which is comments, and some of it is the quantitative. Are we getting thumbs down? Are we getting? What are some thumbs away? down or seg segueing into challenges of the live stream? Fun, fun, fun. You Me know. being on screen is one of the biggest thumbs down. When you have to come no, on this and say, is good. I mean, is there like, you know, in the yeah. broadcast days, like, sorry, technical difficulties. Like, do well, you have something? Well, one of the things is production quality and not having those technical difficulties. You know, if your stream drops, you're going to lose people. Uh, on Facebook, you only have a few seconds before your stream goes away altogether. And that is detrimental to your stream. And, you know, we're, you know, FedEx Office is paying us, you know, a good chunk of money to do a reliable show. And again, that's and why that's I'm, where we come in, and, and he's going to wring our neck. That's why I'm so happy, yeah. you know, with using something like LiveView, is that I have the confidence that that stream ain't going down okay. because I know I have the good internet connection. But you know what? Yeah. If you're here, there's a hundred thousand people here in the convention center. It's a lot of people using internet, and you know what? There's not a lot of bandwidth. You're probably not going to have the best quality stream in the world if you're just going from a cell phone right here. Okay. So, you know, uh, understanding that you have kind of the tech to the job is really important. And from a content standpoint, uh, 
if you promise engagement, you need to return. So if you say, let us uh, see your comments uh, and we'll you know, respond to them, you got to do those do comments. It. You got to read them on air. <laughs> yeah. uh, otherwise, oh the engagement is just going to take a yeah. cliff dive. So it's like this constant game of like cat and mouse in a way. Like, what can I do today that I didn't do yesterday and how to really s get that engagement going? And, and I mean, I'm sure it's so much fun to sit in that room every morning to brainstorm. Yeah. And, and another thing, and this isn't uh, a downside thing, but an upside thing is consistent scheduling. Uh, the, just like traditional TV, yeah. even nowadays, when you know something's coming out and you could look forward to something, you're more likely to watch it. I love it. That's just how you know television, radio has worked for we're, the entirety. We're creatures of, of nature. I, I just right? love the fact that I have not had to do any of my routine. key messaging because Ben has just hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Uh, every single key. But, you know, that that is one of our biggest things at Roker Media is kind of taking television, breaking it down for social, but keeping the quality, the consistency, the things people expect to see. Yeah. And you know what's happening is you know people are liking what we do. Because, you know, it, it's available. You're reminded that it's there. We take heavy advantage of notifications. And people turn them on and, you know, schedule. We tell them to, that they want to watch it. And we're really going to them. And, you know, we almost create a team with the audience. But I, I do think that's why the social platforms are really starting to take over as a destination because it does enable that. There's so much effort, at least in the past even, going into the production of a live stream. You spend all this time from the technical side, then on creating the content side. It's not only as good as how many people are watching it. So if you don't have the ability to notify, you don't have the ability to constantly really make sure people are prepped and ready and ready to log on and watch, it's as what it's a huge waste of time the other is then while they're there it only takes seconds for them to tune out yeah. so there's no patience there it's a very fickle audience yeah so and facebook it's not just millennials it's me too okay no, it's I'm your out, fault. I'm, yeah i'm gone you know if there's buffering i'm gone yeah. I, and i'm not going to necessarily come back yeah. well, and just to talk a little more about the production process um basically on linear television traditional broadcast you have your tech team you have your content team now, it's the same team. So, you know, specifically at Roker Media, I'm able to answer these questions about content because I work so closely, you know, with our producers. And they're, you know, it's basically, can we do this? How do we do this? Is this something we could do because of something you can do? So, you know, the TriCaster is... It's a yin and a yang. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. You know, the TriCaster is what we have powering the show. It's a full, basically, TV studio in a box. And I'm able to use features of that. I let them know things that they can do. And they say, oh, that'll be hilarious if we do it on the air. We, and we, sent we Mario, can do it. And we, we, sent, can. we sent Mario into the rafters of the show to one of the audience TV monitors uh, during our first show. And that was just because I was like, you know, we could pop anything in there, and there's a ladder there. Why don't we have Mario do the show from the sky? So, you know, it's the convergence of technology uh, and content. And I think, uh, what is it? MET is yes. Media Entertainment Technology. Yes. That's that is the theme what, of the show. That's what we're going to pretend it's the theme that the show. Uh, paid me to say, but yes. they did not. The Met Effect, yes. Met Effect. Yes. Say it one more time. Media Entertainment Technology, Met. There Let's go, go. Mets. Yeah. Well, how are we looking, Joyce? I'm looking we're great. Looking Thank you. Having fun? I haven't looked at the screen. Oh, no, no. I've been sideways this whole time. I know. Um, uh, I'm curious, though, like, we love engagement. Engagement makes us, like, it's a, you know, you release endorphins in a weird way, right? Like, ooh, someone likes me. Ooh, heart. Ooh, someone's engaged. Do you think we'll ever get to a moment or a time, maybe with the trend of this, dialing that back more and restricting comments and being a little less engaged? So Do you think that there's value in that? Are you, are you talking from a, uh, from a content creator's perspective and a platform perspective or from a live. user's perspective? Like live, like uh, turning engagement off. Do you think that that would be a pro or a con? Or do, do you think, I mean, I'm just curious. I'm spitballing right now only because sometimes it, get, it can get overwhelming and maybe detract from yeah, an so, overall message. So what I'm hoping that we see a little more of in the future, Twitch does a great job with chat, chat moderation. Uh, we did a show called Chef Shock. It was a live two-hour nightly. We did 15 episodes of this show. Uh, and it was basically uh, Food Network star Justin Warner cooking a full meal from beginning to end. Incredibly interactive. He is... Cool. This is, check it out. Uh, I think we have it on uh, rokerlabs.com slash chefshock. Uh, really entertaining. But we actually had chat moderators in the chat kind of taking out some of the comments that were, you know, not, real time. not pushing the show in real time. And we're going to see more and more of that. Periscope is starting to do that. Um, they have 
kind of uh, group moderation where if they see a comment that's a little off color, they're going to ask a couple people in the chat, and then you know if it's inappropriate, they're going to say this comment's going away. You know, one of the biggest challenges live, real time. For every benefit, there is a trillion negatives. So you know, people can stream something that's not supposed to be streamed. Copyrighted content, inappropriate content. I mean, and, but that's been since time immemorial. If I showed the yeah. blooper reel of all our customers, it would be ridiculous, you know. Yeah. So you know, new show idea. Yeah. So you know, one of our goals in Roker Media is to bring legitimacy to a medium where you know, be, back in the early days of Instagram, oh, I don't want to see what you ate for lunch. That's stupid. But you know, when you bring great impression. It, yeah, that that is uh, me six years ago. Um, uh. But if you bring, you know, the high quality photographers, if you bring the high quality content to Facebook Live, there's a reason Facebook spent millions and millions of dollars going out to influential organizations, right. having them produce live content. And they're doing that with video now. Uh, they're doing another big role of video content that they're producing. And you know what? They're showing you this is what this should be. You know, you lose a little bit of control. When you go live, it's just a fact of life. There's things that can go wrong. There's things that shouldn't happen. But if you train your audience, if you start to create tools, then you can have success. YouTube, I think, is a great example of this. Uh, years ago, in the early days of YouTube, it was basically Comedy Central's place where you watch all of their content. But Comedy Central wasn't getting a penny off of that. And that led to the creation of the best content ID system in the world. Uh, you know, YouTube will, if they even know that you're thinking about uploading something wrong, it's probably going to get either taken down or they're going to work with, your, uh, with the people that own the content to actually, you know, make sure they get the money for that content or have some sort of revenue share. Um, so I think with great technology comes great responsibility, but so does innovation. So, you know, it's, it's growing, it's growing fast. You know, sometimes the technology hasn't even kept up with the growth uh, to that perspective. But, you know, we work to produce the high quality content that we want people to come to be able to expect. I think that's great, you know, and I think that's a great uh, note to leave viewers on. Absolutely. You know, it's it's been super exciting to chat with you two about this. Passion Central right here. I love yeah. it so much. Oh, I much. will say, how many more Never Settle shows so people can tune in? So we got in. three yeah. more yes. Neville Settle, Neville Settle, yeah. Live. Neville Settle, um, yeah, this is. This Can't is, do redos. Yeah. Uh, take two and yeah. three. Uh, Never Settle show is live Wednesdays at 7 Eastern uh, on the Entrepreneur page. So live tomorrow night at 7 and then for the next two weeks after that, uh, we have a six episode season one, and then we're going to work on season two. We wanted to take a little bit of time season one, get out all the kinks, figure out exactly what the show should look like. And, you know, every show is slightly different for exactly that reason. So we got a couple more of those. Uh, some other shows we do, um, you could watch Bull TV every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we've got Roker Labs Live where we have conversations like this on Thursdays. Uh, we've been a little busy lately, um, so we kind of broke our consistency rule a little bit there. Um, and we've got a, a lot more content coming down the pipe. So if you follow Roker Media, Roker Labs on Twitter, uh, that's a great way to know what we have coming up. And if you want to talk more about this with me personally, at Ben Makes TV on Twitter. Um, and I am addicted to Twitter, so talk to me, please. Spoken like a real professional over here. Uh, this is not your first rodeo. Um, I know. It is yes. my first NAB, though. I'm really Are excited to be here. It's, I oh was at the God. NAB New York, which is adorable now that I've seen it's this. It's the mini version. It's, yeah. I mean, this is, this is absolutely so insane. Fun. My favorite, I'm trying to get as many of the giveaway pens as possible. There's oh, giveaways stickers. at all of these. It's booths all about stickers. Sticker. Stickers, yeah, but my goal is 100 pens. I'm at about 50 right. now. So if any of all you right. booths are watching right now, and I'm sure you are, get me pens. Tweet him. Ben Tweet him, and he'll come by yes. for the pens. Yes. yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's just do a wrap, and I'll sign off. Um, and I'm Kyle Lamont, your host of BeTerrific.com live stream event here. Uh, thanks to Live View. Um, we're at NAB. We are going to be doing coverage for the rest of the day and for the next two days. Please stay tuned. We're going to be wandering around the conference, checking out all sorts of cool booths. Um, so keep it locked here on BeTerrific.com, and we'll see you soon.